Hey guys, even here, in this video we're gonna start off with Brad Wilking signing with Raw Nutrition, officially now, but we already pretty much knew, I mean, Fu Arabia did, it, did this announcement for Brad, uh, he made a video, then he took it down, but we all pretty much either saw it or heard about it, but we all knew, basically, and even if Fu didn't do that, we could all pretty much, you know, make a pretty good guess where he's gonna go and why did he leave Hostile, Obviously, he went with Raw because uh, he's coached by Matt Jensen, and Matt Jensen pretty much fired Nick Walker, and he probably made a good offer to Brad Wilkin, and Brad right now is Matt Jensen's best uh, open pro. Now, also, Brad, he actually never won a show. His popularity largely came from Fuad Abiyad, from his podcast. Yeah, Brad took that second spot at the Chicago Pro, he was the runner-up to Hunter Labrada, he looked amazing at that show, it was his breakthrough show, and it is basically the reason why Fuad sponsored him, why he invited him to be a part of the, of the show. So if he never did that, if he never looked that good, he would never be a part of Hostile, but it is a fact that Hostile and Fuad Abiyad is the reason why a brat is so popular right now and why he got the offer from the Raw as well. Now, just being a decent pro, a top pro, usually isn't enough to get a good contract. Social media is very important. Recently, Brad created a YouTube channel. His Instagram is, is decent. But the number one reason of Brad's popularity today is Fuad Abiyad's podcast. And for that reason, you guys tell me, do you think it was fair that Brett left Hostile before his contract ended? Now, if Ford wanted, he could have kept him for the full year. Ford talked about this, and what he says is basically, if, if an athlete is not happy and they don't want to stay in the team, he won't keep them, even though he has the right, legally, because they signed the contract. He doesn't want any unhappy uh, team members. So, Raw apparently offered a lot more money to Brett Wilkin, and he had to accept it. Now, I understand Brett, but maybe it wasn't exactly fair. But hey, there was probably a lot of money in question, and he had to accept it. You gotta understand Brett, too. Now, how well will he do without food, without the podcast? Look, when I saw Brett at that Chicago Pro 2021, he looked absolutely amazing, and I really liked the physique, but it was the podcast that made me like his personality, and what got me to follow him on Instagram and actually to watch his YouTube videos. Now, without podcast, I'm not really that interested, and let's be honest, I mean, he wasn't Mr. Personality, like, he wasn't an addition to the podcast like Ian Valier, Guy Cisternino, uh, even Justin Shire, now Justin is also a great addition to the podcast, Brett, he was pretty silent, he wasn't exactly very funny, I don't wanna say he was boring, again, I like his personality, but it was definitely the podcast that made me like his personality, and uh, he capitalized on it, he got a good offer, he's gonna make a lot of money now, probably a lot more than he was making with Hostile, but with Hostile he had a platform. I know Matt Jensen and, and Chris Baumstead are having some kind of podcast too, but it's nothing like real bodybuilding podcast like what I've had, so, you know, he kind of lost that, but he probably got a lot more money, so, what do you guys think? Was this the right decision and was it fair for him to do this, to go to Raw, to leave Hostile? Tell me in the comment section down below. Is this gonna be the year of Hassan Mustafa? I mentioned him in my previous video, but this video, this new video that he posted, he looks pretty freaking sick. He looks like he is going to finally bring the conditioning. So at this point, he is 12 weeks out of a show. I'm not sure exactly which show, but 12 weeks is plenty of time to get dialed in. Now it could be like the case he's gonna get more and more condition until like. 8 weeks, 6 weeks out and then nothing changes, like that happens, but I sincerely hope that's not gonna be the case this time around, and look, I mean, it's not just the conditioning, somehow I feel like he looks more matured now, obviously his upper body is way leaner, way harder than his legs, uh, not just hamstrings and glutes, but the quads as well, though it does look like he made progress, now maybe his lower body is a little bit more smooth, because he didn't really train it as hard as upper body, because he doesn't need to, 
He is really bottom heavy, to a point where it might be hurting his physique, so maybe he should let his upper body catch up. And it actually looks like it is exactly what happened. So last year he was dieting like a maniac. Like from what I heard, Chris Asito basically said that he was eating like only a couple of meals of fish a day. And he couldn't lose weight, so metabolically he probably destroyed himself. And he had a good off-season, so hopefully in the off-season they fed him more food. So now his body is used to eating more and there is more playroom. Maybe he's not the kind of physique that gets uh, shredded by eating a little bit. Maybe he needs to eat more, you know. We'll see, we'll see. I don't know who his coach is right now, is it still Chris Asito? Uh, I just gotta say, his upper body in this most muscular right here looks much better than before. Alright, next up we have another mass monster, but is this guy really a leg dominant like Hassan? Well, you know, he does have a lot of mass in the legs, but not really structurally, like he doesn't have the craziest quad sweep and his legs are a little bit too short compared to his upper body. But like, are his legs small? No. Can he make those quads bigger? Sure, it would fit on his physique, he's so wide, he's so massive. But when you look at this photo, for example, you would say his legs don't need to be any bigger. They are as big as they should be and they are not looking small or anything like that. But let me show you this one though. Here in this comparison right here, you can see that Hunter has a little bit longer legs. Hunter is a bit taller, but still when your legs are longer compared to your torso, there is more room for legs to be, uh, to, to, to have more sweep in the legs. So it's easier for Hunter to have a bigger looking legs, even though Nick maybe even has bigger legs. Take a look at this video that he posted. I mean, this is him right now. What a freaking beast. <laughs> Would you say that his legs are not big? I mean, look at the hamstrings, jeez. And look at the quads. Like, they are not small. There is so much muscle there. And those legs are really big. But again, it's the structure that makes his legs look, look a little bit smaller than they actually are. So it definitely wouldn't hurt uh, Nick if he grew those legs a little bit more. And obviously he is trying to do just that and it is working well. Look at the size of those freaking legs. I'm sure they're gonna look much, much better once he steps on the stage. It's kind of hard to tell how much did he really grow because we got used to seeing Nick shredded. For the entire year of his uh, insane success, he was peeled, basically, and that's what we remember him as. Now, in the off-season, he got a little bit chubbier, which is, I mean, ha, chubby. He's not chubby, he's just a little bit watery. So, uh, now you can't really see the definition, you can't really see how much did he grow. Maybe you can see it. I, personally, I have the eye for these things, and I can see that he definitely grew those legs, and uh, it's gonna be a different story on the stage. And finally, we have an update of uh, who? Uh, Rafael Brandau or Flex Lewis? <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is sort of an update of uh, Rafael Brandau. He is competing sometime soon, but I honestly, guys, I didn't really pay much attention to him. Even though he's a top pro, uh, I, I don't know if he won one of the shows after Mr. Olympia or was really close to winning it. Like, it was him and Samson and, and Regan who were battling it. So he is the kind of pro that wins pro shows and standing next to flex he looks like a like a, like a classic guy really like a like a child flex is absolutely dwarfing him and there's a lot of people talking about how well will flex lewis actually do at the mr olympia we haven't really seen a lot of photos from him he hasn't been active for a couple of years but i mean this is not really much this is not really an update but you can see, you can see the freaking crazy forearms, he didn't lose any muscle in them, in fact they may have even grown, like those forearms are one of the freakiest ever, and also you can see like the size of his arms, his shoulders, his chest, the entire physique, like his entire body compared to his head is really freaking large. Now I don't know if he's gonna do the Mr. Olympia this year, Hopefully he will see it through finally this time around. If he doesn't, he's going to become the new kind green of the sport. He should be cancelled, right? If he, I mean, he promised since 2017 when he retired. He should have competed 2019, 2020, 2021, and this is going to be the fourth year now. If he, if he doesn't, if he doesn't fulfill his promise fourth year in a row, I mean, I'm giving up on him. But I, I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to be competing this year. And how well will he do? I think he can crack the top 5. Maybe even top 3.
Yeah, yeah, I think so. I feel like he can do that. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.